might as well do that. Awesome. Okay, so welcome. Uh, we are small, but I'm certain we are a mighty group today. And like I said, hopefully this will, I'll get to share this information a little bit more as we go along. Um, if, uh, because we are small currently, I will just invite you both. If you have questions on something that I'm speaking about, um, just let me know. Do you have to jump off the call in 30 minutes? No problem. Darcy, hey, nice to, no problem at all. And like, I can send you the recording if you want to secure the end of it too. And we can, that's totally, totally workable. Um, I will try to check the chat as I'm talking, but I'm not always the most proficient at that because I get going. So um, yes, first, I just want to thank you both for being here. Um, I know Gokin, you said that you have kind of your experience that there's more conversation around nutrition as a strategy for reducing injury. Um, my, my experience is that I haven't actually uh, run into that many people yet that are willing to really bring nutrition in as a strategy and as a solution really to the number of um, the increase in injuries that we're seeing in our young athlete populations. Um, but I'm very grateful to you for being here and being open to this conversation. My name is Diane Johnson. I am a, um, uh, <laughs> I'm an expert in student athlete nutrition. I've been doing this for a long time with a focus, particularly with athletes from about the ages of 12 to 18 and some work with post-secondary athletes at all as well. Um, and my business, my brand, I guess is called Guts where we are working to really, excuse me, evolve student athlete nutrition um, with a goal of really changing the culture around nutrition in youth sport so that our young athletes can really feel good. They can feel better, that they can experience fewer injuries and just crush their goals, whether that's in sport um, and in life and really leave their youth sport journey with a healthy, long lasting relationship um, with food and with themselves. So, um, I'll just give you a, a brief background as to kind of where this all started um, and, a, and a real realization, I guess, for me that things were not working or that what I was seeing in youth sport and with our young athletes was not what sort of the vision that I had in my mind about what sport was really, what I really wanted young people to get out of sport. Um, my professional background is I started my career as a high school phys ed teacher. I started coaching volleyball at that time as well. So I've been coaching volleyball now, which is my main sport for about 22 years. Um, I'm, I was also during that time, the part of the board of directors of a fairly elite volleyball club in our program, as well as I was the president of that program for two years. So in terms of the youth sport kind of machine, I have a fairly unique perspective, I think, and just sort of having had my hands in lots of the different operations and the way that volleyball anyway is, is working. Um, I left my teaching career predominantly because of health challenges that I was having. And I, uh, when I was first diagnosed with those challenges, I I was started looking for answers because none of the medical things were working for me. And nutrition was the very first thing that really made a difference. Um, so at some point in my career, as I was navigating changes and wanting to learn more, I decided to step away from teaching and I immersed myself in, in this world of nutrition. I was certified in holistic nutrition and sport nutrition. I became a certified yoga teacher. I'm also trained in mindfulness and meditation. And it's been 12, almost 13 years now that I've really focused my energy in the health and wellness field with a specialization with student athletes. So again, I, I guess I see this, like I said, kind of a unique perspective on, I've been the coach, I am now the parent. I have two kids that are in sport. Um, and I've, I've been running the programs and I've seen like where the challenges, the barriers to, uh, to, to some of these things that I really feel like our student athletes should get, kind of the barriers that get in the way of those. So um, that's sort of how I got into all of this. And like I said, this realization that like something wasn't just feeling right. I, I thought athletes would be healthier and happier and that the experience overall would be a more enjoyable one. And everything for me comes back to nourishment and nutrition is a big piece of that. So um, like I said, the kind of the guts 
kind of messaging or something that I've been talking a lot about is just that I, this idea that our nutrition for our, our young athletes is really broken and that time and money have often been the barriers that have come up as to reasons why we don't have nutrition as part of a program for our athletes. Um, and basically I'm just saying like, we can't use those barriers or excuses anymore because our young athletes deserve so much better. And what we're seeing statistically with the number of injuries that young athletes are experiencing in sport is, should be a message for us that something, something needs to change. So what we are seeing, and I just pulled some stats for you. Um, these are US stats. Uh, Darcy, I'm not sure where you are, but Vulcan and I are in Canada. But just in the US alone, there are over 30 million kids involved in youth sport. That's, um, and then like one third of those kids will sustain some kind of an injury at least once in their youth sport experience. And that equates to over $1.8 billion in medical bills and healthcare that we're, you know, that that they're dealing with as repercussions, never mind all the other things and the ways in which these in injuries impact athletes and their families. Um, in particular, huge increases in the numbers of elbow injuries, particularly in baseball and softball players, and I would add volleyball in there as well. Um, ACL injuries have also increased like 400%. Um, stress fractures are another one that we never used to see in student athlete populations and now getting seen more of them particularly in the feet in the legs and then even in the lumbar spine um, and if you are familiar with the relative energy deficiency syndrome in sport more and more of these symptoms popping up in our ath young athlete populations whereas reds is really typically something that was coined and studied in elite adult athletes. We're seeing this stuff show up in, in younger populations. Um, and then I don't know if either of you have experienced this, but just also an increase in the number of athletes that are reporting these feelings of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed and really stressed, um, some of them even depressed. And that has increased considerably in the last 10 to 15 years as well. Um, there are certainly many factors in all of this. However, the one kind of thing that's really constant is that as youth sport intensity and the demand that is placed on our young athletes, as it has increased, nutrition has stayed the same. And for most young athletes, that's non-existent. No education, no support, um, no strategies. Just do what you can in the midst of a busy schedule and try to get it done. Um, there's also a really predominant sort of, and this is a larger cultural challenge for us, societal challenge for sure, of eating and nourishing our bodies, but just this standard American diet that is um, disease causing um, and a really prolific use of nutrient deficient foods as, as the norm among our student athletes. So they're not getting the nourishment that they need. Um, when we talk about prevention of injuries, it's usually addressed on the activity level. So we're addressing the, you know, reducing the repetitive injury or the repetitive activity or making sure that they're building strength around these joints or whatever it is. But there's never really much conversation about what we can do nutritionally to reduce injury or reduce the severity or um, shorten the shorten the experience for the athlete. So why nutrition for injuries well what i have seen in the last 12 years working with a variety of programs with individual athletes with teams all across the board is that a large number of young athletes are deficient not only in their energy so just a caloric intake but in nutrients at rest so when you look at their basal metabolic rate a lot of young athletes will not be eating enough or getting the nutrients they require to sustain that rate at rest. That's basic physiological function. That's bodies, you know, organs working, doing the things that we just need to survive. And they're not getting enough to do that. Then we add activity. And for most young athletes, it's a lot of activity. Um, a lot of repetitive activity. So we see that these, these energy and nutrient deficiencies 
are quite profound and they're happening during stages when our athletes are developing rapidly. I mean, you only need to look at how <laughs> end of one season an athlete goes away and they come back and their, you know, their voice is dropped and they're three feet taller and like they change so fast. Um, and when we don't have proper nutrition during these periods of growth, and then we add on all the other activities and things they're doing, we actually are increasing the likelihood of injuries. Their bodies just don't have what they need. We also know that when the body is properly fueled, it is more resilient. So, you know, those repetitive injuries, at least there are the repetitive movements, um, things where we might develop overuse injuries, the body is more resilient because it's properly nourished. It has the nutrients it needs to build healthy tissue and bone. Um, so injuries may not happen as often. We also see when body is fueled properly, that recovery is more efficient. So bone remodeling happens faster. The, you know, the, the layering of muscle tissues happens faster after training. Everything is more efficient. And when or if an athlete is injured, they heal, injured, sorry, they heal faster. So, you know, that could be something as they caught their finger on a post and they needed stitches. Well, our skin regeneration depends on nutrients, right? So we heal faster when we're nourished. Nutrition is absolutely an injury reduction strategy and therefore it's a performance strategy. And it's nice when the two work together, okay? So I, I want to preface, I, the, I'm going to go over four keys that we work on at Guts that are things that we bring in when we work with young athlete populations, whether that's an individual athlete that wants like one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether that's a team, whether that's a whole program of athletes together. Um, and I'll talk more about why, but like, you're not going to see really, I'm not going to talk numbers in this. This is, this is, I guess, more of like the mindset behind what we need to do to help these athletes get a shift in this experience so that they're not as injured at young ages. Um, if you want to chat about more specific stuff after the fact, absolutely, we can have that kind of conversation. And that's what we get into when we meet the athletes and the programs. Uh, so anyway, the first key that we really bring across when we start talking to young athletes and coaches about nutrition is that we have to accept that they are exceptional. Okay, they really, really are. And I'm not, and not the like ego inflated exceptional that, you know, every once in a while we encounter those athletes or the parents that have that mentality, but just that the reality of the situation is that this is an exceptional experience and time of their life, um, which means that their nutritional needs are also very complex and very unique to any other point in their life. Um, when we look at nutrition just generally, there are two times when it is most critical. One of those is during any stage of growth and development. And again, you think of your athletes like between the ages of like 10 to 18, depending where they're at, they're growing so fast. Their bodies are changing so fast. Okay. And then the second time is any period of high physical activity or where we're seeing high levels of training or physical exertion. Okay. Young athletes are pretty much the one period in our life when they are in both of those stages at the same time. Um, you know, if you think of an elite adult athlete, they're done growing. They don't have to worry about the growth and development piece anymore. Whereas, you know, maybe there's a young kid um, that's not active. They're growing fast, but they're not under those heavy physical demands. And so our, our young athletes, these needs are super important for them. Um, with that, the exceptional experience of the just the stage of the life that they're in, facing additional challenges to eating enough and eating well. So, you know, they're super busy. They're also, they're eating within their own familial or cultural um, experience day to day. They've got peer influence. They've got media influence. They've got body image stuff because their bodies are changing fast. They're you know, they're eating at the cafeteria at school, taking food, developing independence, they've got way more challenges to eating well than we have at this stage in our life. Um, also more than their parents have. And the parents are the ones that are there trying to do the help, right? So I think before we can even start conversations around student athlete nutrition, we have to get in this mindset of like their needs are, 
are so unique and complex at this stage. And that's actually something I try to help them understand. Like this is a really special time for you. You have opportunity to create amazing foundations in your health and performance right now. Um, and it's kind of cool, the light bulbs that go on when we have conversations like that, like you are exceptional. So let's treat your body exceptionally, right? It's like the fuel in the Ferrari. You're not going to put regular unleaded gasoline in your Ferrari, right? So helping them to understand this is the first thing before we can change anything. Okay, then we get this kind of second key piece here that they're helping them understand that they have individual needs that are unique. Um, so like what works for me isn't going to be the same foods that work for you. Your schedule is different. You're not going to be able to have the same strategies and to just help them understand that this is normal, you know, that they, the kind of the way of here's the Canada food guide and you all get the same information. It doesn't work. It's not realistic for them. They don't like the same foods. Their bodies aren't the same. Embracing this uniqueness, their individual needs is a really important piece for young athletes and it makes them feel special and appreciated. And, and, and that makes them feel good through this process. So part of our job is to help them assess their own unique needs. Like what does that look like in terms of a number? How many calories do I as the individual need to consume to perform my best? And I'll just say, we don't like, I'm not getting into like measuring foods with kids and that kind of thing. That's not what this is about. It's an awareness piece of like, wow, like I really need a lot, right? That we can sort of open our eyeballs with that. And then they get to understand that this is a process for them, this kind of ongoing assessment or the journey that this changes all the time. It's going to be this when they're 13, and then it's this when they're 15, and then their off season comes and it changes again. And then maybe they transition out of sport when they're 17 or 18, it's going to look different. These are lifelong strategies that help them embrace just their own uniqueness and their own unique needs. Okay. This is also, like I said, it's about strategies that will work for them because uniqueness is also connected to what's happening in the home, what's happening in the budget, what's happening with scheduling. Um, and, and these are all things that we have to help our young athletes work with and work through if nutrition is actually going to make a difference for, for them. Um, there's a piece here too about helping athletes learn how to reflect and listen to their bodies. Like what feels good? What feels bad? Often this good, bad feeling is just a message from their body saying, you know what, that food doesn't really sit well in my stomach. I mean, that's not the best choice for me. Versus, wow, I felt amazing at practice after I had a banana before I played, right? That so often we're moving so quickly, they don't ever learn to just take a step back and be like, hey, that worked. Hey, this didn't, right? And that's part of them developing strategies and nourishment that will support um, their bodies through all of the rigors of their sport, okay? On the long term, Right? We might only have the athlete for a year or two in our program, but long term, this is helping athletes develop a deeper knowing about themselves. And this is sort of that last piece of the guts um, mission is just to make sure that these are strategies they can use for their lifetime. It's always going to look different. It's always going to change, but you can review this process over and over. And if they have a knowing in themselves about what works for them, then that foundation continues. Okay. So these this like exceptionality and the uniqueness, I think are pieces that we really get to help our athletes understand if nutrition is going to come in as something that makes a difference for them. Okay, the third piece and a big part of what we do at GUTS is around education. And this is probably the teacher in me coming through, um, as you can see with the slides. Um, but it's we teach them about real food, right? Because we all kind of, we exist, we grow up, in doing what we know, right? We're impacted by our community and our families. And we just kind of continue to do, do, do until maybe something doesn't work for us. And then perhaps we start asking questions. But we come in and we start with these, the again, the individual, the reflection, like, what am I doing? Is it working for me? And then we actually educate them. So of course, all the information we share is relevant to the age group, right? To the particular sport, to the to where the athletes are at, but the new, but what you have to understand is like um, in 12 years of doing this, working with all different kinds of programs, 
I've probably had maybe five athletes when I ask how many of you've had a nutritionist come to chat with your with you or with your team they say no and they're not getting education on food at school other than what's on the food guide and that is not what athletes need they need more Okay, so what we can kind of build in with this education that's really critical for the injury piece is that they can learn that certain foods contain nutrients, vitamins and minerals that their body uses to perform and to heal. Their body uses vitamins and minerals to do jobs. And if they don't have the jobs or the nutrients, the body can't do the job. Uh, and this is kind of the speak, right? This is the language that I'm using with the kids so they understand I don't need to talk about cellular reproduction and things with 14 year olds, but they need to understand that if I have these vitamins in my system, then they're going to help me with this. And that's absolutely realistic information that we can empower kids with, um, with the injury piece. So like, we, you know, most kids I talk to will tell me, okay, well, calcium is important for bones. Okay, well, where do you get calcium from? Milk. Where else? Yogurt. Where else? Cheese. Where else? Yogurt. <laughs> right? like, they, they just have a limited scope of you because they've never been told, okay, well, what about, what about broccoli? What about almonds? What about fish or kale? These are all foods that have calcium in them and you can use them to help you build strong bones. So we can just kind of expand what it is that they've been exposed to. Um, then if it happens that someone actually maybe does have a stress fracture on your team, like let's have a conversation about bringing more of these foods into their eating routine so they can start doing some rebuilding. Let's help them strategize around how to get more vitamin D in their diet, how to get phosphorus in their diet, all the nutrients required for bone building. Okay. Maybe they have some tissue, like soft tissue damage. Well, let's focus on foods that have vitamin C and zinc in them that help with rebuilding. Maybe it's as simple as um, they're tired. You have an athlete that's tired at practice all the time. They're out of focus. They're making silly mistakes. They might get hurt in that state. Well, let's talk to them about carbohydrates. What are you eating? If you're tired, maybe you just need some more energy before you come to practice. Where do you get that from? You would be amazed at what they've never been told. I had an interesting conversation last week with a young, a 15 year old lady, young lady who we were talking about carbohydrates and she suggested chicken as a good carbohydrate source. Like you, would, we, these are things that we assume that they know, but so many of them don't. And it absolutely can change their experience. Okay, so big focus is education and getting past, and I'll talk about this again, but the barriers of, well, it costs too much. Well, we don't have time to build that into a program. Though that's, you know, I think that's a mindset shift and we absolutely can find ways to, to bring that in for our athletes and their parents. Okay, this is another piece that is really, really important in my work in the holistic perspective of where I come from in nutrition, um, but is teaching athletes how to rest and digest. So one thing that we need to consider when we're looking at how the body works is just that regardless of how well they are eating, you could have an athlete that's super, super dedicated to their nutritional work. They're trying really hard. They're getting, putting good foods in their body. If they are highly stressed out, if they're feeling pressured all the time, overrun, overscheduled, worried, they're not going to get much from that food. They're not rested. They're not relaxed enough to be in the state where digestion actually takes place. So often when we talk about resting, recovery, that kind of stuff, it's kind of lumped in with training, right? Like we'd have a stretching session at the end of practice or at the end of our training our physical training or lifting session. Um, but, you know, like athletes are they're reaching for a toe and they're talking to their neighbor and they're probably already thinking about what's happening after practice or what happened in the day before they got there. It's not really rest. Okay. They're not yet in that point where they can recover. So part of this nutrition piece is teaching athletes how to intentionally rest, how to relax, how to shift their body into a state where digestion happens Therefore, nourishment happens because they just can't pull nutrients from the food that's not properly broken down. 
Okay, so this these are these are really, really important strategies to bring in when we're looking at injuries, especially too, because, you know, just stress, right, increases levels of inflammation in the body. That's going to weaken different body systems, put athletes at a greater risk for injury. Um, and it's just not something that's really chatted about. I'm going to show you a quote here in a minute from a program I worked with that really embraced this and the, and the difference that it made for them. Um, I think something that us as coaches need to get our minds around is that this again, well, I can't, you know, we can't afford to bring a yoga teacher in three days a week, or we can't afford to bring a meditation teacher in and, or we don't have time. We only have an hour and a half practice and get it like all these things, right. That we can change the way that we look at this. Our job as coaches, I think is really to give our athletes strategies. They're all going to grasp at something different that works for them because they're individuals. But can you lead a mindful minute at practice and introduce your athletes to the concept of what it feels like when they're not thinking about a thousand things at once? Can you do an activity with tennis balls that really gets them to focus on one thing? And help them understand that they can choose their focus to help themselves relax. Can you teach breathing? Okay, that can take like five minutes. Can you can you run a you know print a yoga nidra script off of the computer if you can't bring a teacher in? Lead your athletes through and have a special event where they get a taste of what yoga nidra is like or a progressive muscle relaxation introducing our athletes to these strategies is really important and they will grasp the ones that work for them. They'll grasp the ones that really resonate with them. Um, and the, the work of this resting and digesting plus the actual food piece is huge when it comes to reducing the injuries that our athletes are experiencing. Okay. And then this last one I threw in here earlier this morning, cause I was just kind of going through my notes and um, my personal experience as a coach and in, you know, sort of, again, the machine view sport and sometimes encountering the parents that are a little bit overbearing, I often would just be like wanting to keep the parents at an arm's length, right? Like just stay over there and let me do what I do with your kids. Um, when it comes to nutrition, the parents must be involved. Um, and they, in my experience, are so appreciative of receiving the information because they never got it. They never got it as an athlete. If they were an athlete, they've had no nutritional support in bringing up kids or for their own selves. And they're trying to do their best, but they don't necessarily understand the exceptional nature of the state that their kids are in. Okay. The reality too, is that we talked about this, the needs of the adults are entirely different than the needs of the kids. So parents can feel really overwhelmed if like, well, now I have to cook two different meals and it takes too much time and we don't, we're running all around. So like, well, how do we help them strategize? So this isn't a stressful piece in their life. It gets to be a, a, a get to piece in their life, right? Um, all of the scheduling things for the parents too is huge. If we can give them strategies that help them and their kids make even a couple better choices in a week, even get a few more whole foods in in a week, like all of that makes a difference when it comes to injury reduction. Um, the reality again, that the parents are this integral piece. The athletes are with you for a short time. For a lot of them, parents are still the main source of food. Um, and so if we want to impact on that level, then we need to support the parents. Um, and this is actually a space where I found it very, um, just really felt great actually to bring parents into the envelope and give them a role of your job is to feed your kids and this is what you need to do. And they just ate it up. Um, again, sort of counter to the, just stay over there. Like I'm gonna, I need to coach the kids. Like give the parents something that they can do. And if it comes to feeding the kids, then they're usually all over that and they will extract so much good information from, from that environment and that experience. So something that I love to do um, is to kind of create a space of imagining. And I know you can read all the things on the slide here, but I'm just going to take you through them. So I found it's typically our logical brain that gets into all the hows and the whys and the, well, the, you know, the really kind of boxed in, it looks like this, and this is how it works. And it's also where we see the barriers. 
Okay, so I want you to shut off your logical brain for a second and step into imagination and the feeling of like, well, what if? Okay, so imagine we feel like as a coach, if you show up to practice and your athletes come in and they are well fueled, they are energized, they are physically and mentally present and resilient. Like what would practice feel like? Okay, how would it feel to plan your practices and for competition knowing that your athletes are well? You know that they're gonna show up. Nobody's hurt, nobody's sick. They're fueled and they're showing up well to, and prepared to play. What would it feel like if you did have the athlete that, you know, cause injuries just happen. We can't control all of that. But what if you were able to get that athlete back to playing faster? Okay. What about even uh, colds, colds, flus, you know, those things that go around that, <laughs> um, like what if there just weren't as many of those, like how would that affect your planning and your scheduling and that kind of thing? Um, the focus and the concentration of your athletes at practice and competition, if that improved, how would that change your experience? Okay. Think about, or imagine, I guess the, the money that you could save families on all the extra training they're doing and not seeing any difference because their kids aren't eating or all the rehab they're going to spend money on to recover from an injury that's going to happen again because the kid doesn't have the nutrients that they need in their diet. Okay. Think about seeing an actual reduction in, in the injuries that your athletes are experiencing. Man, maybe they're, maybe you've got a few kids dealing with some different things and imagine in two years that those things are gone. Okay. Also just the symptoms, the you know, the irritability, the depression, the hormonal fluctuations, the, the amenorrhea in female athletes, the more prone to injuries, the lacking training aids, all the things that are a part of the relative energy deficiency syndrome, seeing those go away because you get, they have enough energy. Okay? Seeing increased in performance, like you take your team from here to here with a nutrition strategy. And think about the enjoyment that you get to experience as a coach when you see your kids really thriving in sport. Imagine the enjoyment of their, like see their celebration, see the, the parents, right? Change happens in this imagination space because this is where we see possibility. Logic is important, but it can also shut us down. So this is where I love to take people because this is where we get to change things is what would it look like? Okay, these are a couple of quotes I just want to show you based on just the impact that this kind of work had. So this quote is from a past head coach at the University of Calgary women's volleyball team where I worked with them for two years as their wellness consultant. And we worked on nutrition and rest. So in two years, injury rates decreased by over 80%. The overall mental and emotional health of the athletes increased and their nutritional decisions made an impact on performance because of my education and guidance. So, I mean, this was sort of the, this was when I really saw it all take shape the way I had imagined that it would impact the athletes. And the second year with this team was when they won Canada West, which they hadn't done in a really long time because their girls were hurt and weak um, and sad, honestly. Uh, nutrition and rest made a massive difference for them. This is actually a quote from the starting setter of that program who is now playing professionally in Greece. And we actually have had the opportunity now to work together as coaches, which has been awesome. Um, but she said it was a real privilege to work in this scope of nutrition because we look at athletes through a holistic lens and it's really given her the nutritional, mental and emotional tools to help in all aspects of her life. She still return or refers back to the personalized nutrition plans that I gave them when she's now playing overseas. And this is the piece too. I think that we um, need to remember that the life lessons through sport, right? That they extract so much during these years through the love of the game and that are the, um, the skills that we can impact, impart on them, like nutritional, mental, and emotional tools for all aspects of life. Like that for me is profound. Um, and it's been amazing to see where this athlete has gone with, with her game and in her life. Um, Ken Zellis here, this is a director of a, or the athletic director at a private school out near where we are. And he's also the president of the basketball association in our community. Um, just kind of 
commenting on the despite what I've shared with you today being a little bit more of the mindset behind that what we share is really based in science and research and it's easy for the young athletes to follow and understand. Um, we also come with the teaching background so we and a coaching background so we relate to kids we relate to coaches on the programs and we know um, we know what they need. Um, and then ACE Volleyball Club, the one at the bottom, um, currently I'm working with several of their, pro, their teams uh, and just that I'm really passionate about what I do. I'm pretty easy to get along with and it's been a really, really good time working with those athletes and seeing, seeing um, their, their seasons kind of as they're coming to an end now where they're finishing off has been really, really awesome. So just some concluding thoughts for you through this um, is just to be be willing to challenge the current norm in youth sport in, in many ways, particularly, of course, with this conversation in terms of nutrition and helping athlete reduce, athletes reduce injuries. It's just what we're doing isn't working. Um, there's just more getting hurt. Their bodies can't sustain this intense season and the intense physical demand. We need to give them more. Um, nutrition hasn't been a focus, but we know through research that shows us that nutrition can help reduce injuries and speed healing. And why are we not bringing this into every youth sport program, regardless of age? I guess I'll just say this too, you know, having had the opportunity to work at the post-secondary level in this respect, having had some really amazing conversations with past professional baseball players and, you know, past national team players and all these like they might get nutrition then why are we not giving it to our 12 to 18 year olds why okay especially when we know that it makes a difference again i bring this back to it's a mindset shift okay we get to prioritize athlete health and wellness through education and ongoing support in nutrition injury reduction mental and emotional health, um, lifelong healthy strategies, relationships with food, performance, all come as a result of that, when that is a foundation, okay? So I wanna just really thank you for tuning in to listen to my thoughts on this subject. Like I said, it's not str specific strategic, like this many calories, this much protein, this, because that is reserved specifically for the unique needs of each athlete. I don't feel right coming on here and talking about specific things when I don't know the background of what that person is going through or what that team has faced. Um, if those are conversations that you wanna have, absolutely 100%, I'd love to hop on a call and just chat um, and see what, what your needs really are, what the needs of your athletes really are. Um, I have listed some contact info there for you. My email info at djwellnessconsulting.com. My phone number. Um, if you want specific information about some of the different programs that we offer at guts, you can check out the subkit.com slash guts program there. Um, in the work that we do, we have all kinds of programs available for individual athletes, teams, and or larger programs. Um, workshops, are not, I love them, but I don't see a huge value in them because we're in and we're out and the kids need ongoing support. So we do more longer term programs where we have little touch points with the teams and the coaches and the parents over a period of time for the most benefit to everyone involved. Um, at the sub kits, there's a student athlete nutrition hub, which we have listed on a wait list right now. So that will be just like consistent information coming through sort of in a newsletter format, if that is of interest. Um, there's also a focus a subscription in there called the weekly, which is more focused to the parents and the coaches. So providing adults with the strategies for nutrition and wellness so they can support the kids. Um, and if any of you are interested, I have sort of like a side project, a little side passion of mine called the well. And it is a online space where we've created, basically brought together a whole bunch of different wellness resources specific to young athletes, coaches, and parents. So we've got nutrition webinars, we've got meal plans, we've got recipes, uh, yoga videos, relaxation, 
um, mindset conversations, strength training videos. We've really just tried to bring all of the resources into one hub and we're constantly adding more into that. So if you want more information on that, just reach out and I can uh, kind of let you know how to access that. Um, feel free to follow us on Instagram, connect with me on LinkedIn. I do a lot of my work in there and um, yeah, I will hang on for a few minutes. If you have any questions or you want to show your, your face and say hi, because the blank screens on there. <laughs> um, but otherwise I will let you go. And again, just really grateful for your time this afternoon. Thank you.